initially what I think just from the title alone and then at the end I'll give my usual verdict. The first one is Am I the arsehole for picking my wife up from the airport 10 minutes late? So just from the title I'm gonna say not the arsehole. Here's what happened. My wife was due to fly into one of the most popular airports in the world last night at around 9pm. Her landing time was 8.50pm. No checked luggage, so I told her I'd be there at 9pm. At about 5 past 8, she apparently started calling my phone, but unfortunately I didn't see slash hear the calls until 8.15pm. This is because, like her, I keep my iPhone with the little silent switch on at all times, so that it just vibrates. I didn't hear the vibration because I had my gaming headset on and was gaming slash talking with friends. Keep in mind, I wasn't expecting any calls from her until after she landed. When I finally realised she was calling me, I looked at my phone by chance. I picked up and she told me that her plane had landed early, in this airport unheard of, and she told me to leave now. I just said, okay, I'll see you soon, and hung up. This is where Am I the Arsehole comes in. I thought it was fine to finish my online match and left the house ten minutes later. I drove to the airport and there was a ton of traffic as usual and as expected, and I didn't pull up to where her and her friend were waiting until about 9.05. As fate would have it, that was pretty much the original time we had planned on picking her up. To make a long story somewhat shorter, my wife sprang the fact that we had to bring her friend home as well, which I was fine with. They lived a few minutes away and everything was fine until after we dropped the friend off. Then my wife showed me how upset she was that I made her wait an extra 10 minutes and that there was a huge difference between waiting 30 minutes and waiting 40 minutes. At first I kind of laughed it off and tried not to be upset at her, but inside I was thinking, uh, hello, I'm doing you a favour by driving to the airport and picking you up in the first place. Why are you getting upset over waiting 10 minutes longer than you wanted when people sometimes wait hours to be picked up at the airport? Eventually, we had a little back and forth about it, but I was just sick of arguing over something so small to me, and I wanted to just agree to disagree, and my wife was also sick of talking to me if I wasn't going to apologise, so I went to sleep. Am I the asshole? I feel like this isn't an apology-worthy event. You can't just land almost an hour early and expect your driver, even if they're your husband, to drop everything they're doing and come pick you up immediately, right? Edit 1. I was not aware of the fact that you could track arrival times of flights after they left their departing location. That's my bad. I will do better in the future. Also, someone said I'm an arsehole for not missing my wife. She was gone for one night. I did not miss her in the true sense of the word, lol. Edit 2. I literally just showed my wife some of the responses here and she had the exact response I thought she would because she's my wife. She laughed. Someone really thought their response to me saying that I didn't miss my wife was clever when they said, show her this one too. Well I did, and she laughed. We're adults in our 30s and we've been together for almost a decade. A night apart isn't shit. I'm probably going to be in the minority here, but I feel like he's not an arsehole. I'm assuming by the edits his wife isn't that bothered anyway, but it was only 10 minutes. I know he finished his game beforehand and he could have gone straight away, but I think 10 minutes late isn't really that bad. I don't know, that's just me. I can see. I bet he has already been voted an arsehole, so I'm assuming I'll be the minority anyway. <laughs> the next one is, am I the arsehole for silencing my girlfriend? Obviously you need a lot more information, but I'll go with yes for now. <laughs> I, male 28, have been dating my girlfriend, Nancy, female 25, for about two months now. We met on a blind date that our friends set us up on and have been seeing each other relatively regularly since then. I'm not entirely sure if we are officially boyfriend.
for an hour was completely reasonable in my opinion. 
expression. I'm like the asshole. Yeah, he's absolutely the asshole. Him saying, I've tried to find a compromise with her on this, but she won't budge. Kind of feels like he's not trying to find a compromise at all. He wants her to compromise. Which isn't a compromise. She shouldn't have to do something so sexist just to avoid your family treating her badly. And if he really didn't agree with his family, he would get in the kitchen himself. Be sat back and let other girlfriends and wives be ostracised and talk badly about. I'm sorry, but he doesn't seem like he's all that bothered by the tradition at all. And I hope she realises he's an asshole and leaves him. Am I the asshole for leaving my sister's wedding early because she kept my husband out of pictures? Initially, I'm going to go with no, he's not the asshole. My 31 male sister Anne, 34 female, got married on Saturday. My husband of 7 years, Mark, 32 male, was there with me and up until one point it was an amazing evening. After the ceremony, Anne wanted a picture with all of our siblings. There's five of us and their respective partners, so we started lining up. When Anne saw that my husband was standing next to me, she shook her head and said something about him ruining the aesthetic. Apparently, her plan was to put one man and one woman next to each other alternately. My youngest sister, 18 female, who doesn't have a partner and was standing on the very side, offered to stand between the two of us so we could be close and Anne's wish would still be respected. I thought that was a great solution, but Anne disagreed and told Mark to get out of the picture. He's quite introverted and tries to avoid confrontation under all circumstances, so he simply complied and told me not to get angry, but it was obvious that he was hurt and disappointed by being left out. Obviously, it didn't stop me from getting angry and I walked away with him. I can understand that Anne wants her wedding pictures to look exactly how she imagined them, but I think that the idea my younger sister proposed was very reasonable. I congratulated Anne and her husband one last time, but then I said my goodbyes. When I was asked why we were leaving, especially before taking the pictures, I said that I didn't feel like our presence was wanted. We left before dinner was served and I took Mark out to his favourite restaurant to cheer him up a little. Anne has texted me since, saying that I was being overdramatic and making a fuss over nothing. Our parents have tried to remain neutral, but except for my youngest sister, the rest of the family supports Anne and thinks that leaving early was going too far, and that I should have sucked it up instead of ruining her big day. I did too, because there was some confusion. My husband is able-bodied and white, so is most of my family, but we are indeed a gay couple. As I thought, he is absolutely not the arsehole. The younger sister gave a solution that the OP was comfortable with, but Anne not accepting shows there's something more to it than just alternating genders in a photo. And surely if their little sister doesn't have a partner, she was going to be an odd one out anyway, so what difference does it make? With two married men standing next to each other. To be honest, good on him for standing by his husband and not letting him be treated that way. It's disgusting. Am I the asshole for mocking my friend's husband's weight? I'd say yeah, but I'm assuming there's more to it. <laughs> my 22 female best friend Jenny, 23 female, just recently had a baby with her husband Tom, 25 male. My boyfriend and I got to meet their baby boy for the first time last weekend when they came over to our flat for dinner. We have a hot tub on our balcony that my parents gave us for Christmas last year and I adored them to bring swimwear so we could go in it after dinner. My boyfriend wasn't up for it so he held the baby while us three got ready to get in the tub. Jenny was the last person to get changed and came out of the bathroom in a bikini. I thought she looked amazing, really happy and glowing, but Tom kind of laughed and said something about her still having some weight to lose before she'd be as attractive as she was before her pregnancy. I was a bit stunned by that comment and even though Jenny didn't say anything, her smile disappeared and she looked obviously uncomfortable. She and I had talked about her struggling with weight gain during her pregnancy and I thought Tom's comment was more than insensitive. I got angry because I started wondering what he might be saying to her in private if he was comfortable dropping lines like that in front of other people. So I responded with, she just had a baby, what's your excuse? The dude has a hefty beer belly and a double chin but thinks he can joke about a new mum's weight. He got really defensive and told me that I need to learn how to take a joke before stomping off to the hot tub. Jenny chuckled at my comment and I thought that was that, but when they left for the night, Tom pulled me aside and told me to keep my nose out of other people's business. I don't think I was entirely in the wrong, but my boyfriend told me I shouldn't have reacted at all, because it really wasn't my business, and I think Tom's reaction speaks for itself, and it makes me wonder whether I might have been the asshole in that situation. 
Yeah, she's definitely not the arsehole. He can't use the excuse that it's not her business when he said it in front of her. Like, you just made that her business. And regardless of whether she's just had a baby or not, you don't say shit like that. Like, it's just nasty. To be honest, I can think of many words stronger than arsehole to describe this man. The next one is, am I the arsehole for forcing my stepdaughter to cut her hair? I'm gonna go initially with arsehole. And I don't feel like we need much more information, but... I, 31, met my husband, 34 male, 8 years ago, and we have been married for 6. He has an 11-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. I work from home, so I mainly end up taking care of her. I have since she was young. We have a generally good relationship. She stays at her mother's most weekends. She has incredibly long, blonde, wavy hair just past her bottom. It's a nightmare to take care of. It frequently tangles and she always needs help brushing and styling it before school. I'm not a morning person and I do not like having to wake up early to do a kid's hair. It's expensive to maintain as she requires more products. She insists on using hair royals, which can cost around $11 and only last a few weeks. She also insists she has to use curly hair shampoo instead of regular shampoo and conditioner, which is often over $10 per bottle, and she goes through it at a fast rate. She won't use a regular brush on it as she insists it breaks her hair and hurts, so she uses a wide tooth comb which takes a long time to brush when she could be doing other more productive things such as homework or helping me with chores. I decided she had become obsessed with her hair and I do not want her to become vain, so I decided it needs to be cut. I don't see it as a big deal as I have always had shorter length hair as my hair does not grow very fast and I get frequent trims. It's a lot more practical. She's sounding jealous already. I took her to the hairdressers as normal. In the car on the way down, she said she wants to make sure the hairdressers doesn't cut too much. I politely explained that I would like her to cut her hair to shoulder length as it has become a burden. At first she thought I was joking, but when she realised, she started to cry. When we got to the salon, the hairdresser was reluctant to cut her hair due to her tears, but I explained the trouble we have maintaining it, and assured cutting it would be the best for her. In the end, the stylist agreed and cut her hair. The stylist braided her hair, then cut it. She kept it. Her hair was now just past shoulder length and looked a lot darker. The car journey home was silent. I offered her McDonald's, but she refused. She went straight to her room when we got back. My husband went up to see her when he got home and apparently found her on her bed, sobbing, holding her old hair. My husband immediately called her mother to come and collect her and as soon as my stepdaughter was out the door, he started yelling. Her mother also came in and gave me a mouthful. As I should. I explained my reasoning, but my husband wouldn't budge. He said if I had an issue, he would have dinned her in the mornings, and that he didn't mind paying for the products. He was so furious, he said he no longer trusts me around his daughter, and doesn't know if he can be with a woman who he doesn't trust with her. This broke my heart. I didn't mean her any harm, I was just so tired, and I'm trying to reduce stress. I've always been the one to raise her and her brother, and I'm just exhausted. Am I the asshole? I genuinely think this might have been one of the worst Am I the Arsehole posts I've ever read. Of course you're the bloody arsehole. I can't believe she's actually had to post this. And hasn't just come to this realisation herself. Like you've made this poor girl cut her hair because you're lazy and don't want to do her hair. When it seems like she's perfectly capable of doing it herself if she knows how to take care of it. Like she obviously has curly hair. She knows to use it specific shampoo, she uses a wide tooth comb, she uses hair oil, like this girl clearly knows what she's doing. And honestly it just sounds like the stepmother's jealous of her, the daughter's hair. I think that's what it boils down to. I think the husband is well within his rights to say that he doesn't trust her anymore and that he's not sure he wants to be with her. I don't know if this is too far but I would class what she did as abuse. One awful person. Okay, the last post I have is, am I the arsehole for telling my girlfriend her home decor is the reason I won't host a work gathering at her place? I feel like I need more information for this one, but I'm teetering on arsehole. I've, male 32, been with my girlfriend, female 29, for over a year now. She's smart, funny, a bit quirky, and has a serious job with a good salary. We have a great time together and generally get along very well. The only thing is her choice in home decor is bizarre, to put it frankly, and not something you think a normal, grown adult would be into. Her apartment is definitely a reflection of herself in interests, not in the best 
this way though. My girlfriend has a wall dedicated to animation in one room of her apartment, like Futurama pieces and etchings of some weird triangle guy. Then there's the wall of framed or preserved insects in another room, but not insects like butterflies or moths. Instead she displays tarantulas, beetles and large stick insects. Her bathroom has a subtle theme of the ocean, pretty common, but instead of starfish or shells she has a little anglerfish nightlight a small vampiric squid painting, and then a framed diagram of what apparently is a goblin shark right by the toilet. I would say a majority of her home decor and furnishings are okay. The apartment itself is very modern and sleek. It's just the random decor and juvenile-ish themes like cartoons, insects, and bizarre ocean creatures is off-putting. How is any of that juvenile? This is where I might be the asshole. I avoid bringing people over to her place, especially people from my job, because of how juvenile it looks. Everyone's impressed when they see the high rise, but that quickly fades once you enter. For one time I brought a work colleague over, they ended up telling me after that they found her insect wall terrifying. I work in finance, and appearances and first impressions are important. My office will hold casual gatherings where we get together for a few drinks, good food, and we rotate hosts. And this time it's my turn. The problem is my place is under some construction and not an ideal place to be right now, so I've been staying with my girlfriend. My girlfriend suggested that we host my colleagues here since she has the space and thinks it will be fun. I told her I planned on skipping my rotation and seeing if the next person would be okay with hosting early. She kept pressing on why I didn't want them over here, so I finally said it's because her home decor is strange and not something a grown woman would have, and also that her insect wall horrified the one colleague that did come over. My girlfriend got mad and said at the end of the day it's not my space and these things bring her joy. She also said that she is indeed an adult woman, which is exactly why her apartment is decorated in such a manner. I love my girlfriend, I do, and it's okay to have different interests, but does an adult really need to decorate with them besides a few things here and there? I mean, my own mother asked if my girlfriend was autistic after she saw the entire apartment for the first time. So Reddit, am I the arsehole for telling my girlfriend her home decor is the reason I won't host a work gathering at her place? He didn't need to specify that he worked in finance because I think this post was proof enough. He is absolutely the arsehole. What is a grown adult woman? supposed to be into. Would he prefer that she has no fucking personality at all? If he's this offended by someone else's choice in decor, he really needs to get a bloody grip to be honest. Also, fuck both you and your mum for insinuating that being autistic is a negative thing at all, because it's not. She has interests and you're a boring knobhead. That's what it boils down to really. Anyway, that's all the posts I have for today. I hope you enjoyed them and be sure to let me know in the comments what you thought, whether you had a different opinion to me or whether I loved it. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you next Sunday.